Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Beer Braised Beef Ribs. Now smoked beef short ribs might be my favorite barbecue protein of all time, but there's more than one way to cook beef ribs. In fact, braising is a pretty popular way to cook beef ribs or any big piece of meat, and that's what we're gonna explore today. We're gonna put our ribs into the pot with some aromatics and then we're gonna cover it with beer and just braise it until it's really tender. Now the thing about braising is by the end of that process, that meat's just gonna be kinda gray and soft on the outside, not super appetizing. So we're gonna fire up the grill, we're gonna put some rub on the outside, a little bit of honey mustard, and create some caramelization, get that Maillard reaction going, so we've got some really great flavor and crunch to the exterior as well. So we're gonna start by breaking down some veggies here, starting with an onion. Uh, when we're doing a braise, you can cut your veggies pretty big because we know that they're gonna be in there for a couple of hours. We get that whole onion in there. Large dice, we'll call that about three cups. Next, we're gonna add some carrots and carrots add a nice sweetness to the braise. And these as well we can do in a large dice, or just big rings or discs of them, I guess I should say. Rings. <laughs> so that's gonna be about a cup and a half, and these measurements aren't super important, honestly. Two times as much onion as carrot. Next we're gonna break down a whole head of garlic and throw all those cloves in there as well. some massive cloves of garlic, but we've got a long braise, so I'm not worried about it. Just throw them in crushed. But to be honest, you probably don't even have to peel these because the braise we're not gonna eat in the end anyway, but I just don't wanna have to worry about it getting stuck to the meat possibly, so I'm taking the paper off. So next we're gonna add some chipotles in adobo. We'll do about a half cup of that. The chilies and the sauce. You can adjust this how you like the spicy level. Just throw one in if you want it to be mild, but this adds a nice smokiness because these are smoked chilies and then the sweetness from the adobo sauce. Now we're gonna bring some barbecue in the mix here with some barbecue rub and I'm using the Plowboys bovine beef. This is one of my favorite beef rubs, use it on brisket all the time, it's great on short ribs. Let's do three tablespoons. So here we have a five pound slab of beef ribs. I'm not gonna do any trim into these really. We're just gonna slice them individually so that they'll fit into our Dutch oven. Now working from the bone side, obviously the easiest way to figure out where to make your cuts, right in between each of those bones. Now as far as this backside goes, there's this skin on the backside that's kind of holding that bone in. So if you want the bone to just pop out, then take your knife and slice straight down here and that bone will be gone. If you like the look of the bone, just leave it just the way it is. So now we just gotta nestle these guys in here. We try to keep the meat down as much as possible, but it is gonna move as it braises, so we can make adjustments later. All right, party time. Dumping them double fisted till they're all the way covered. Well, let's say 95% covered. Stop, that one's for later. All right, everybody get to know each other. You're gonna be hanging out in there for a couple hours. Got me. So now comes the braising part. We're gonna cover this with a lid so that we trap that heat in there and we don't lose all of the beer to evaporation. This will also decrease the cooking time. You're gonna get this done in a couple hours rather than a few hours. So the other thing that we need to think about is if we're cooking this enclosed anyway, where should we cook it? Now you can cook it on the grill if you want to. It's gonna change your timeline from what you see today because today we're just gonna throw it on the stove top. It's where we can get the most efficient heat right now without wasting the fuel on the grill. We are gonna finish it on the grill with that high heat char, so be ready to fire it up here in a little bit. 
So as soon as this all comes up to a simmer, we're gonna turn the heat way down. You can start out high at first just to get it going, but then I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that heat just about as low as it can go. But I constantly wanna see some bubbles. Anytime I peek in here, there should be some bubbles going on on the surface, but we don't wanna boil it too hard. Well, our ribs have been simmering away for about an hour and 45 minutes now. They've crossed the 200 threshold on the internal temperature. So it's time to fire up the grill so that we can hit these with the sear. We're gonna be cooking on the Kamado Joe Classic 3 today. We build a really hot coal bed so we can get a really great color and crust on the outside of these ribs. So we're gonna load up the basket with some lump charcoal. We'll place a couple starter cubes around here. Get it fired up. So I'll just let this get going for about five minutes before I shut the lid down and open the airflow up. Well, we're at about two hours and 15 minutes now that our beef ribs have been braising in the beer and our aromatics. Let's see what they look like. We lost a bone on that one. Get these out of the braise and I can show you what I've been checking on. So essentially I'm taking my instant read thermometer and just probing for tenderness. There's not a lot of resistance right now, but we want to catch it before it starts falling apart. We're looking at internal temperatures 205 to 207 on most of these guys. But again, when we probe, the important thing that we're looking for is just not much resistance, but the meat's still holding together. So here is our ugly, delicious gray meat that we talked about early on. Not gonna look pretty coming out of the braise, but it is gonna taste great. So now we're gonna move on to the barbecue portion of this recipe. And we're gonna start by slathering it up with some honey mustard. This is the Big Rick's Jalapeno Honey Mustard. Not just a binder, but a good slather. We wanna taste some of that sweetness and some of that tang. And then we're coming back in with the bovine bowl that we used in the braise and we're gonna hit the outside of the beef ribs with that. So great barbecue flavors in here. Some salt, some sugar, that magical celery seed hanging out in the background. And boy, if we were too rough with these right now, we could just tear these things apart. And that's why we need our grill to be nice and hot. So we make this a quick sear. Now with the top and bottom vents wide open this entire time, we're sitting at 525 to 550 on the temperature range, so really hot. All right, so we got a couple different levels going on here so we can make some moves if we need to. We're gonna start down low. Close to the charcoal as possible. All right, check this out. Look at that sizzle going on. Getting the char. That fat's starting to drop, which is creating that flame. So we're getting good color on both of the sides here. I'm gonna move them to the top rack now where we can kind of stack these next to each other and get that third surface. So what's happening now is this fat's starting to drop out of the meat and onto the coals, which is why we're getting this fire. But that actually adds a lot of good flavor back to the meat in the form of that fat flaring up. and we're getting some great color. The thing to remember here is that these have been done. These have been done since they came out of the beer. So we're just putting color and flavor on the outside at this point. So we got the char where we're looking for to really add that smokiness to this. Because remember, this wasn't a long smoke. You're not gonna taste smoke unless you get some good color on the outside. We've given them about five minutes to rest. They don't need a long time to rest. This isn't a big roast of meat. So the good news is we get to eat pretty quickly. Let's slice them open. So here's the one where the bones already come out on its own. You can see here in this opening, this is where that bone was and there's this really tough stuff around it that we're not gonna eat. So we're just gonna cut right around that stuff. And then you can check out in there, that's all that fat that's been breaking down 
and those in-between spots. And that's what makes this taste so juicy is when you get that fat broken down. Still just holding together so it doesn't shred, but adding tons of moisture. For these guys that are still on the bone, we can just cut right along the bone there. Or you can use it as a handle, however you want to do that. Just a little bit of that rubbery stuff to take off. Like you could also even just slice this just like this and note to self, don't eat the bottom part. Oh yeah, look at that. We got just beyond where that fat was broken down. I don't know why that got me kind of excited. <laughs> That's that perfect, that perfect spot where the collagen's broken down so it's ready to fall apart, but it hasn't yet. You're getting just the right amount of bark from the char. There's some fat in there. There's some beef in there. Mm. It's official, it's just my favorite cut. It's so good. I'm getting beer right off the bat, which is great. That's why we braised it in the beer, so we could taste it later. It's not overpowering, but it's there. You can smell it too. When I smell what's going on before I even take a bite, I get beer and honey mustard. What, what, what more could you want? And you can taste those things. The saltiness from the rub just barely comes through. We really didn't overdo it with that, and I appreciate that. It feels like it's pretty well balanced. It's not a smoked rib but it is a really tasty rib. Look at that. That bone's done. We get in here and chunk up some of this stuff, put a pile of that together with a little bit of sauce on the side. That'll rival burn-ins for sure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.